There's nothing more majestic than being able to capture the perfect moment, the perfect scene, and catch the first light of the day. We're here in Malilipot in Albay. And again, of course, the Mayon volcano is right here. And the sun is rising, about to rise, but is already casting so much warm light that you can already see my face even if the sun hasn't risen entirely yet. And that's the perfect cone of the Mayon volcano with perfect reflection. And we're gonna have, if I'm not mistaken, perfect light today. I want to show you how different the light is going to be or maybe somewhat show you the importance of, of the light and how drastically it is going to change when the sun starts to peak above the horizon on this side, casting some light on this side. And I absolutely don't know what we're gonna see but what i know for sure is that it's going to be great it's going to highlight some of the best things about the mayon volcano so right now i am shooting with the a7r4 1635 gm with i already have a three stop nd filter with a cpl there and the balancer gnd and this is not the optimal setup for what I'm shooting right now, but this is the optimal setup for what I anticipate to shoot once the light hits. So I'm going to take my exposure right now and show you what it looks like before the actual sunrise. So this is the astronomical twilight wherein there is already light in the sky but no warmth and barely any depth and texture in whatever it is hitting. In anticipation of a great sunrise that's coming, this is basically just your test shot. At this point, you can already do long exposures to keep the shot clean and of course already compose your shot. Now key things to consider, we have good reflection but a CPL will enhance that even further. Um, I'm using a three stop also because I want to do long exposures. There are some clutter in the reflection, even if the reflection is perfect. So you want to be able to somehow take that away with a long enough exposure. If you take this with a snapshot, of course, with, with a quick um, shutter speed, you're going to get the ripples in the water, plus you're going to get all the clutter. But if you take long enough of an exposure, you're going to be able to take all of that away and you know just take away all the distraction from the perfect view or the perfect scene so the sun is still on its way making its way to peak above the horizon but you can already see that amazing warm cast on the sky and that's great in contrast now and it's blending really well on of course all the green on all the trees and also the surface of the volcano altogether at this point this is already civil twilight we're already seeing some warmth coming from the sun that is just hiding behind the horizon at this point it's important to be ready with the filter setup that you're going to be using when the light hits that volcano you of course still want to do a long enough exposure because you want to keep the shot clean but at the same time you need to get the perfect exposure for that peak because you want to get the vibrance and the detail that the sun is highlighting. Okay so the sun is just above the horizon on this side and you can now see so much warmth already on the peak of the volcano. And it's actually showing us a side of Mayon that you rarely ever see because this volcano has its own climate 
and most of the time there's at the very least some clouds on top but now there's very little clouds and I think that's just a bit of smoke on top and it somehow has this brownish purplish tone that gradually shifts to green and you can see the the difference in color that that I guess the the eruptions in the past have made and that's basically the time to capture the first light because there is light it's just on the peak and it's gradually moving down because the sun is going up so if you want to you want to capture that perfect transition that's that's basically it what i'm doing now is i'm shooting with a six top nd filter with a 1.2 balancer and a cpl of course with the myops smart plus i'm doing one minute exposure to get the, re the reflections clear to get the the smoothness of the water plus of course also the movement of the clouds while we're exposing let me show you what's around so this is mr dennis morillo and it's his fourth time to go here but the first time to be successful in capturing yes. mayon from this place and you can just feel how happy he is and the secret to our success is the guy right there his name is Tom Falcon. You may have already seen him in my previous video. And why is he our good luck charm? We don't know. He, we just know he's the most successful guy when it comes to landscape photography here in anywhere near Mayon Volcano. This is why the most important part of all of this is being early at the location. As you are able to witness the changes in light, you are also able to anticipate whatever is coming next. Being early allows you to decide on your composition and be able to determine what you have to do to be able to get that perfect shot that's already in your head. Okay, so what I just did was change into a 2470 and just transferred all my filters to the same setup because this time since the sun is already up above the horizon we know that the light will be a bit more stable so change isn't going to be as drastic and this is the perfect time to get a panorama of this wide amazing scenery that we are seeing right now so I am just using still a six stop and the ISO 100 I'm gonna keep it leveled thirty seconds and I'm just gonna capture this view not really from end to end because there's actually so much more right here and what I'm doing is a manual panorama so I'm gonna monitor the level on the screen as I pan around because I don't have a panoramic head but you know what nowadays that's actually really easy to do without a panoramic head especially since we're not working with with too many foreground elements that are very close that would get distorted so a hundred percent confidence in the fact that Lightroom or Photoshop will be able to stitch this together without any problem so what you want to do is actually overlap the frame around a third each time so it's a lot easier oh also I'm using a new tripod testing out the Manfrotto 190 GO which I've long believed is one of the best value for money tripods. And that this is because it's 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 really stable. It's the perfect weight for me. I don't even need to get the carbon fiber. 
So the real reason why I don't have the carbon fiber is the fact that the local distributor does not carry that variant here. And aside from that, the weight is actually already really good. This is about the same weight as my carbon fiber 055. So if I don't need anything taller, this is actually perfect. It also comes with its own ball head already, so that's less of a problem. But the only available variant here in, in my country is the one that does not have, you know, that feature-proof Arca Swiss clamp. So what I did was I replaced it with something I got out of Lazada, which is basically Filipino or Asian Amazon. I think it's in the perfect height. And of course, it also has that X-Pro horizontal column. So nothing really, nothing else to look for. I also really love the fact that this is using twist locks. Anyway, I'll do a review video of this one separately if you're interested. There we go. I am down to my last frame. And of course, I can already show you the output. And that's basically the, the sunrise sequence or the transition of light during sunrise. And this is specifically for instances where the sky is really clear and you're getting direct sunlight from the other side hitting the view. Anyway, if you have any questions about how I shot these and how I process them, do leave them down below in the comment section. And if you've gotten this far into this video, thank you for joining me in this quick adventure. And of course, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape and architectural photographer. This channel shows a lot of content about landscape and architectural photography and the gear and the process around it. So if you're into that, please do consider subscribing to the channel and thank you for watching.